Today is Saturday, June 17th, 2017. Thank you for tuning in and logging on, everybody, on Facebook Live, blogtalkradio.com, and WorcesterDailyNews.com. And this is Truth It in the AM. My name is Truth It, and I'm here to address any and all things when it's time to, and it's time to. And my guests that I have in the house for this special Saturday edition of Truth It in the AM is none other than the Hebrew Israelites. Y'all make some noise to the Hebrew Israelites if y'all can. So, uh, so, uh, so I am here, and uh, if everybody can just take a chance to introduce yourselves, that would be amazing. Shalom, Most High in Christ, bless. First and foremost, we want to give all praise to uh, Yahweh and his son, Yahweh Shai King, who most um, ignorantly called Jesus the Christ. This is Brother Yerel ben Judah. I go by the name of Ephraim Yisrael. Priest is all out of rock. Yaganah Maccabeus. Moshe ben Israel. Aunt Mikael. Solomon ben Israel. All right. So we are here with you guys in... Uh, uh, Brandon, I, I, now you do you go by Brandon or what? What is your name? Because go by Yakana Maccabeus. Yakana Maccabeus. Did I yes, say that sir. right? All right, let me. I want to have to write that down. Please forgive me if I uh, get that wrong because that's my first time hearing that. So uh, Yakana, and I'm going to spell it wrong anyway. So Yakana, 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 uh, Maccabeus. Maccabeus. Okay, yeah. so can I call you Yakana or do I have you to just say Yakana? All right, Yakana. Yak <laughs> Yaka, Yaka Nan. Yaka Nan. Yaka Nan. Yeah, okay, it's Hebrew, Hebrew for uh, John. It means God's gracious hammer. Okay, well, Yaka Nan. Yaka Nan Maccabees means God's gracious hammer. Okay, all right. So uh, you're the first person that I spoke to about this. And uh, we've been uh, speaking for a long time, ha having healthy debates, I would call them. I wouldn't call them arguments. Because I did call it an argument once, and you said, "Yo, no, nah, it ain't no argument. If you're mad at the truth, then you're just mad at the truth. Yeah. Uh, so it wasn't an argument. So... Uh, we've had our discussions about things biblical and and things that are going on in the world, and I yes, sir. I am a firm believer of allowing everybody to have a chance to speak their piece and speak what they believe in and have their own voice because I like my voice and my piece and my beliefs to always be spoken as well. So okay. I was it was an honor to have you guys here and to have you guys speak about what you wanted to speak about. So uh, why did you accept? Why did you want to come on to the uh, show? Well, I believe it's the time that. This truth come out, you know, it's been withheld from us. And uh, we've always been told that uh, we're African Americans, which is two European men. Uh, Africa is named after Scipio Africanus, and America is uh, named after America Vespucci. And you know, you can't take two European men and make a nationality of people. So our nationality has been hidden through us, and then we've been discovering and researching further who we are in the Bible. And nobody other than the, the people who are so-called African-Americans and Hispanics fit the curses that are in Deuteronomy 28, you know? So it's absolutely talking about us all through this Bible. And um, we'd like to thank you for having the opportunity so that we can edify the people and show them who we are according to the scriptures. All right. So uh, I'm glad that you spoke about who you are. Uh, because one of the questions I did have is, uh, who are you? How did you... How do you guys know that you, the uh, African American and the Hispanics, are the true Hebrew Israelites? Okay, um, first and foremost, uh, what we want to do is we want to go to John 8 and 32. Uh, and it reads, the book of John, chapter 8, verse 32. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Mm -hmm. And this is going to start to liberate our people by letting them know who we are through the truth that is in this Bible. Uh, that we are in actuality the, the Hebrew Israelites, uh, according to this Bible. And um, what we're going to do is we're going to go through this Bible, we're going to edify the people, and um, we're going to bring another uh, scripture out to show you how we are to read this Bible and get the proper understanding according to this Bible. So um, could you read uh, the book of Isaiah, chapter 28, verse 10? Isaiah, chapter 28, verse 10. For precept must be upon precept. Precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little. 
So to get the proper understanding of this Bible, you're going to have to go precept upon precept, which is command upon command, and line upon line, here a little and there a little. You're going to get the surface understanding if you read it like a novel, but if you want the true uh, secrets that are in this Bible, you have to go precept upon precept, line upon line, here a little and there a little, and it's going to be revealed to you to get the proper understanding. Okay, so um, is, is there any other scriptures to help back up that? Because... There was one time I had a discussion with you, and, and you said that the slaves that came from Africa to uh, America are the Hebrew, Hebrew Israelites. Absolutely. Now, you, you, now you, I remember you did give me scripture to back that one up. Is it possible at all you could read that one again? Absolutely. We're going to go to uh, Deuteronomy 28, and um, I believe 68, mm -hmm. and, and any, any brother can bring it out anytime they feel like it. Okay, so in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 68 and it reads and the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships by the way whereof I speak unto thee thou shalt see it no more again and there you shall be sold unto your enemies for bondmen and bondwoman and no man shall buy you okay now right there it says that we were going to go into Egypt by ship mm -hmm. now we, we were the people in Israel so Israel and Egypt you know they're right there if we walked in there by caravan, if we walked down into Egypt as a people and came out as a nation, mm -hmm. why would we have to go back into that Egypt by ship? Egypt is another name for the house of bondage. And if you go to Exodus, I want to say... Um, Sly, Sly, I got it. Um, the book of Exodus, chapter 20 and 2. And it's just per proving that Egypt doesn't mean uh, the literal Egypt. It's talking about the house of bondage. Mm -hmm. It means slavery. Okay. So from here, it's Exodus chapter 20, verse 2, and it says, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Shalaki, and I, um, to add on to that, there is no other um, nation of people that ever went into bondage mm -hmm. or slavery as a whole by the way of cargo slave ships, except for the so-called uh, um, African Americans. Okay. Native, Native, Americans, Native Americans as well as the Latinos were the only people that ever went to slavery through cargo ships. Okay. I, I did notice that you said so-called uh, African Americans. Why do you, why do you refer to uh, black people as so-called African Americans? The reason why we um, I, I refer to the so-called African Americans, just like the, I brought out earlier, that uh, uh, um, these names was forced upon us by uh, our slave masters. And understand that... Uh, um, Understand through uh, um, slavery, it's a lot of things that have been pushed on uh, on us uh, through slavery as far as Christianity. And uh, um, and just like the Ock brought out, that uh, um, America Vespucci and uh, uh, Philippios Africanus is um, two Roman generals that conquered that, that land in the, um, through, um, through the slave trade. Mm -hmm. All right. So... Uh, Who's so one of you guys or a couple of you guys came from Delaware, was it, or even down south further than Delaware? Who came uh, the furthest here? Brother Yazar did. Brother Yazar came here from Baltimore, Maryland. Baltimore Brother Yazar? Okay, let me, I gotta make sure I get these names down so I don't uh, <laughs> yeah. be showing these signs of disrespect. Uh, y A Z A R. Yep. Yep. Okay, Yazar? Yes, sir. All right, so uh, why did you did you come down here for, uh, uh, for you came down here for this or what did you come uh, travel so far for? First off, thank you for traveling as far as you did just to come up here. But uh, well, there's no problem, you know. It's about sacrificing, you know, about with the brother, you know. Yeah. Um, you know, always, you know, communing with brothers. That's what it's about. You know, okay. Our people together. So All anytime right. you got to sacrifice for your people, it's worth it. All right. So this question is, uh, I kind of want to go all around and everybody to give a chance to answer this question. What made you, uh, or, or how, what point in your life, and what were the circumstances that you became a Hebrew Israelite? Me personally, um, the church that I grew up in, it actually taught us that we were the Hebrew Israelites, mm -hmm. but didn't teach us the full context of it. it was still mingled with Christianity. Mm 
So I didn't realize that we really, really had to keep these law, statutes, and commandments and go back to them until I started reading and studying this Bible and started reading it for myself mm -hmm. to see that the Most High is mad at us for doing things in the past, and he's still mad at us for doing the things that we're doing right now as a people. Mm -hmm. You know, that's why we're going through the curses that are in Deuteronomy uh, 28. If you read uh, 1 through 14, you, you would have read that we would have had all of the blessings. But since we didn't obey the Most High God and go to these words, full heartedly you know we're going through the curses we're suffering through them right now us going into those cargo slave ships is a punishment us being named after these two european males is a punishment you know if you go to deuteronomy 28 and uh 37 it says and thou shalt become an astonishment we are an astonishment right now we killing each other we on drugs our women is walking around in booty shorts half naked and stuff we don't respect them uh we're, we're rapping about just drugs percocet molly get out of here come on right, now that's right. just trash yo what are we teaching our children we're astonishment uh, we are, hold on hold on hold on we are become we have become a proverb like people look at the, us like oh man these people is a mess do you see these people hanging on the street corners they just treat each other like garbage and we have become a byword the byword is african-american we have become niggas we have become spicks um we have have become jigaboos um we have become just trash you know any anything that they wanted to call us they call us puerto ricans uh they, they call us african-americans they call us uh any any other name that you could think that's yep. not our name they named us something else which is a byword mm -hmm. and that's who we are according to the bible and these things were prophesied thousands of years before any of us even existed on this planet that they was going to happen to the children of israel mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, yeah, the, the, a lot of those things. So, who else? What, what made you? Uh, anybody else want to give their testimony? Kind of how they uh, came to become a Hebrew Israelite? Well, the brother really cleared it up for me. I went through the uh, curses of Deuteronomy 28, and it fit our people to the T. So, mm -hmm. I just identified my culture, our culture, with those uh, curses. Most of us don't understand who we were, or we can we cannot even search our history back. Uh, uh, past uh, um, slavery, mm -hmm. you know, if there's a cutoff point in our history past our slave master, and we can get that knowledge of, of self in the, in the scriptures. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so, but so, there's nothing personal that, uh, like, uh, brother uh, Yakana came to any of you guys and and explained it to you. There was nothing. You're like you know, some people like, oh, I was going through a tough time in my life, and then I learned about who I really was. So there's there's nothing like that that uh, had you guys come to uh, become a, a Hebrew Israelite. Well, most of us uh, grew up in a Christian church, mm -hmm. and uh, um, far as uh, searching for self, you know, we couldn't find that information. Most people don't know who they are past their uh, uh, great grandmothers and their uh, great grandfathers. So um, just me personally. Via uh, studying the, the scriptures, I fell I fell um, fell among uh, scriptures that truly identified as far as uh, the Song of Solomon, chapter one. Mm -hmm. uh, um, Solomon was um, explaining in chapter one that he's black, but mm -hmm. he's comely. So when I took that and I traced his lineage back, I understood that the scriptures every last one of the Israelites was black people. Okay. So called well, so called black people, and black is a a, a color, not a nationality. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, the next question that I have is the Gentiles. Who are the Gentiles that it speaks of in the Bible? Because uh, I've had this conversation with Yakanan uh, before, and he specifically told me that no, that there are no, you know, that white people are not. Uh, they're not the Gentiles. Well, that's that's a misconception. They are Gentiles, but some places in the Bible, mm -hmm. we are referred to as Gentiles. Does anybody want to edify the brother? Yeah, yeah. If you want, um, jump to jump to Galatians uh, three and three and twenty eight. Someone can bring that up. A lot, the, the big misconception between Gentiles and, um, and 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 Jews, like Gentiles, they think that the, the word Gentile just deals with anybody who's other nation. But right. when you go into the definition of Gentile, Gentiles actually either people from other nation or people who practice the same customs as the other nations. Um, so, I, can you pull out the Zadavans Bible uh, di dictionary definition 
of Gentile, please. Do that as one. If I could pull out um, also um, Maccabees uh, chapter 6. Yeah, I'll grab that. Yeah, I'll grab the precept. You got that? Go ahead. Galatians chapter 3, verse 28. Uh -huh. There is neither Jew nor Greek. Uh -huh. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. For ye are all one in Christ. And for that, for that misconception right there, a lot of people think because it says Gentile, it says uh, it says Greek and Jew, that it means that everybody. But if you look at the scripture, it says Greek and Jew, so that 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 cancels out anybody. For for example, for like it says Greek, if you're not Greek or you're not a Jew, right there, that scripture right there cancels you out. Mm -hmm. Not on, not only that, but when um, you get into the Maccabees, and someone can pull that out in chapter chapter six, it shows through the history of how we went and we went we were in, uh, in slavery with the Greeks and we took on their customs and we took on their traditions and we were cut off because we took on those traditions and them customs. Uh, you got that in, you got yes, the Ma in Maccabees? Go ahead. The book of Maccabees, this is in the Apocrypha. These are 14 books that the Protestants took out so that we wouldn't know who we were uh, in the Bible and so that it would be hidden history taken out so they could clarify themselves as being uh, the Gentiles in the New Testament false. So, so that's why those, the, the Bibles were taken, that's why the uh, books of the Bibles that are not in the traditional uh, or, or the, the Bible that's used in the Western civilization. Absolutely, they try to tell you it wasn't um, inspired by the Holy Spirit, but it's, it's a lot of hidden history in there that we don't know so that we could further show people that we are the Gentiles uh, mm -hmm. that Christ is talking to. Because he tells uh, the disciples clearly in Matthew, go not into the way of the Gentiles. So that will make some parts of the Bible contrary, mm -hmm. you know. So um, we're going to start and we're going to go uh, to the book of 2 Maccabees, chapter 6, mm -hmm. uh, verse 6. And we're going to start there. And it says, neither was it lawful for a man to keep Sabbath days or ancient feast or to profess himself to be a Jew at all. So hold that. So now, so now we're in slavery if we can't call ourselves Jews. What we're gonna, what we're gonna uh, call ourselves? We will call ourselves either Gentiles or we call ourselves Greeks. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So that right there, it was, it was illegal for us to call ourselves Jews. Okay. So if we can't, like I said, uh, if we can't call ourselves Jews, we would have to call ourselves Greek or Gentiles. We have to conform to the customs of the people who kept us in, in captivity. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So. Yeah. And from there, I want to jump all the way down to verse 9. And it said, Whoso would not conform themselves to the manners of the Gentiles mm -hmm. should be put to death. Mm -hmm. Then might a man have seen the present misery. Right. You know, so like he said, it was illegal for us to be, profess ourselves to be the true Jews. Mm -hmm. Because they had made it, like if you, if you did, you were killed. Okay. Okay. And this is the reason why we get the confusion when uh, uh, um, you read the uh, New Testament, when you see Gentiles and you see read the scripture uh, earlier when he said there's neither Jew nor Gentile. See, the, uh, the Christian church teaches, see, listen, he's talking about everybody here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But understand that we was in captivity, and this is the reason why we were called Gentiles, because if we was to confess ourselves to be a Jew or even keep any of the um, the high Sabbath days or any of the holy feast days, we, we were put to death. It was against the law. Okay. And um, to further prove it, Michael, could you read the Zotavans Bible Dictionary definition of what a Gentile is? Okay, Gentile from the Zondervan Bible Dictionary. Usually, it means a non-Israelite people. Well, usually, right? Key usually. word. It usually means, mm -hmm. like, most of the time it pertains to somebody or the other nation. But because of ca captivity, it pertains to us as well because we were not allowed, allowed to call ourselves uh, uh, Jews. We were had to call ourselves Gentiles. Okay, so what do you say uh, to someone who says, well, the Bible says... Whosoever believes, mm -hmm. whosoever. Grab that. I think that's an axe, right? Grab that. Axe what? That's John. John. Oh, John. John three sixteen. Okay. Okay. Yeah. See, um, a lot of people they like to go to John three sixteen, yep. but they never start at fourteen. Well, they won't start from the beginning. Yeah. <laughs> so we're gonna go to the book of John. So, yeah. Grab grab three sixteen first, and then and then go to and then go to uh, John three and one. Okay. So we're gonna go. To the book of John. Uh, John 3, what? Where are you starting? 316. We're going to start at 316. The, 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 yeah, the, the famous, famous verse. verse. Yeah. The, the, the misconception about John 316 is because uh, you, if you think about it, it's one of the verses that are pushed through Christianity. Yep. The majority of the world knows yep. what John 316 is. All they had to do was believe. So that's it. I'm yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> exactly. You know what I'm Like John 316, everybody knows John 316. Yep. It's yep. one of the verses that are pushed among people because it says God so loved the world. Mm -hmm. But it's funny how that's the only scripture you can find in the Bible that says God loves the world. 
Right. But you got to understand the word that's the world in that scripture and then use the other verses for context of the scripture. Because somebody else grabbed a verse of numbers. I got you. Okay. okay. Uh, first, we're going to read. Um, sure we're going to read uh, the famous verse, John, th John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, mm. that whosoever right. believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. But, see, what people fail to do is they fail to start at the beginning. Like he said, you can read uh, John 3, uh, verse 1. Uh, this is uh, John chapter 3, verse 1. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. So right there, that lets you know that Jesus was talking to a ruler of the Jews. So mm -hmm. he's addressing the Jews. But, furthermore, they never start at John three fourteen, And it, it reads, verse 14. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have eternal life. But you got to question yourself. Who did Moses lifting up the serpent up to in the wilderness? The Israelites. So, Lucky, and that's the reason why precept must be upon precept. So when we read the scriptures, we got to go back. We have to interject it and connect it with, mm -hmm. with another precept. Mm -hmm. In other words... We're gonna go back and see who John, who um, uh, Moses lifted up in the uh, wilderness. Bring it up. Mm -hmm. So he said, as Moses lifted up uh, um, the serpent in the wilderness. Mm -hmm. So this is um, Numbers chapter twenty-one, verse starting at verse seven. It says, therefore the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned, for we have spoken against the Lord and against thee. Pray unto the Lord, and He take away the serpents uh, uh, from us. And Moses prayed for the people. And the Lord said unto Moses, Make thee a fiery serpent, and set it upon a pole, and it shall come to pass that every one that is bitten, when he looketh upon it, shall live. And Moses made a serpent of brass, and put it upon a pole, and it came to pass that if the serpent had bitten any man, when he, is, when he beheld the serpent of brass, he lived. And the children of Israel... Uh -huh. Of Israel, mm -hmm. forward and pitch it, uh, both. So I understand that uh, um, um, in John uh, three fourteen, when Moses lift at, it says as Moses lifted up the, um, the serpent in the wilderness, he lifted up the serpent to the children of Israel. It was in dealing with no other nation. And then they go to the um, um, John three sixteen for God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believe in Him shall not perish but have everlasting life. But if somebody can give me Isaiah chapter 45. I have it, but hold on. It's like you. Uh, could you read the Zotavans Bible Dictionary definition of world? Yeah, not only that, but you got to understand, like, when you're looking. Wait, okay. was that scripture in Isaiah? Sorry. Oh, Isaiah 45 and 17. Isaiah, Isaiah 45, 45 and 17. 17. Okay. But yeah, like I, uh, like I was saying, um, when you look into the world, the, the word world in that context, when you look into the, for Greek, when you look into the Greek word for world in that context, it says cosmos. When mm -hmm. you look into the word cosmos, it only deals with, it says government. Mm -hmm. It's a government of people. And you can look it up for yourself. It, it, it's, it's a, when you're looking for it to Greek, it says cosmos in that, in that translation, 316. Mm -hmm. So it's only dealing with the government. It's not dealing with the whole world. Okay. Yeah, you can pull that. You can pull that out. Oh. Okay. And in John 3. Hold on. Go ahead. Yeah, this is the definition of road from the Zondervan Compact Dictionary. Mm -hmm. First definition, universe. Reference John chapter 1, verse 10. Number 2, definition number 2. Human race. Psalms chapter 9, verse 8. Psalms 96, 13. Acts 17, 31. Third definition. Unregenerated. Salakia. Unregenerate humanity. John 15, 18. And 1 John 2, 15. And the last definition is um, Roman Empire. Luke chapter 2, verse 1. So as you've seen, as you read, it's many, many different definitions of world. Mm -hmm. As you know, it's Disney World, it's the wide world of sports. Mm -hmm. It's um, the science world, you know. It's mm -hmm. many, many different worlds. So now we've got to prove who the world is in John 3.16. Mm -hmm. So now we're going to go uh, to Isaiah 45 and 17. And it reads, But Israel shall be saved in the Lord with an everlasting salvation. Ye shall not be ashamed nor confounded. World without end. Mm -hmm. That's the world that Christ is talking about right there. The world that's coming, that he's coming back to save. The mm -hmm. world of Israel. You know what I mean? For God so loved the world. 
See, that's, so, the, that's the one thing about the beautiful thing about the precept upon precept. When you go precept upon precept, you can find the understanding of these scriptures. Mm -hmm. you, a lot of the, 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 the problem with the Christian church is they isolate scriptures. Yep. For example, like John 3.16, they isolate that scripture, but they don't deal with the context of the scripture of what it's talking about. Okay. You know what I'm saying? That's why the Bible tells you how, to, how, how you're supposed to read it, to get the mystery of the scriptures. All right. And, and in John 3, 6, John 3.16, it says, For God so loved the world mm -hmm. that he gave his only begotten son. Let, right. Let's see who Christ came for. Mm -hmm. Who did he uh, give his son to? Give his son to. Yep. Yep. Bring that and up. in um, Matthew 15 and 24, uh -huh. Christ says... I am not, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. That's mm -hmm. the only first, that's the only people that uh, um, um, Christ came came for, mm -hmm. is the, the house of Israel. And that's Matthew 15, 24. 15, 24. 15, 24. Um, yo, if you want, grab uh, John 17 and 17 and 9 as well, if you could. Okay. Um, and this is dealing with the world as well, because again, he, he John 3, 16 says he, he came for the world, mm -hmm. but in you go down a couple more chapters in John uh, 17 and 9, and and uh, the will bring it out. But it says, I'll, I'll, you know I mean, I, I pray for the world. I pray for them. I pray not for the world. Yeah, the, the book of John 17. I have I have uh, 9 through 11 highlighted. Uh, the book of John 6, 17, uh, 9 through 11. I pray for them. Mm -hmm. I pray not for the world. Right. Now, the world can't be everybody if he says he's praised not for the world, mm -hmm. but for them which thou hast given me. For they are thine, and all are mine, are thine, and thine are mine, and I am glorified in them. And, I, and now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world, and I come to thee. Holy Father, keep through thine own name those whom thou hast given me, that they may be one as we are. And so like, like, like you're saying, he said, I pray for those who were given to me. Now, if you jump back to Leviticus 26, I mean, um, so like, you jump to Leviticus 20, verse 26, it says, And ye shall be holy unto me, for I am the Lord, I, I am holy, and I have severed you from the other people, that ye should be mine. So he cut off Israel from the other people and made him his. Mm -hmm. So when you go to John 17 and 9, it says, I pray for them. I pray for not for the world, those who were given to me. Okay, so, so that's not for non-believers. That's just for... That's just scripture. That's just, right. Yeah, that's just scripture. It's just saying, it's just directly saying, I, I pray for them. I pray for not for the world. I pray for those who were given to me. Mm -hmm. And you got to go back to the scripture. That's why precept upon precept shows you who was given to him. Okay. And Leviticus 20, uh, 20 and 26 shows who was severed and given to, the, given to Christ. And if you read uh, the book of Second Esdras, uh, chapter six, verse fifty-six, it says, "As for the other people which also come of Adam, uh -huh. thou hast said that they are nothing, but be like unto spittle, uh -huh. and hast likened them to the abundance of them unto a drop that falleth of a vessel." Right. You know, if you if you got uh, a bucket and a little bit of water fall out, mm -hmm. you don't care about that little bit of water. You know, he's showing you that he cares about Israel above all people. And it's not our stuff. It's just what it's the what Bible scripture, says. Yeah, scripture says. And, and we can pick it up. And, um, so wait, but you just read you just read it from a book that's not in the Bible. But it, it was in the right, Bible. Right, right, right. It was in the Bible. So my question is, where if someone wanted to purchase a Bible or get a Bible that has these missing scriptures out of it, where can they get them from? So you, get, um, you can order uh, um, original 1611 King James Bible, mm -hmm. and the Apocrypha is still intact in the Bible. Most of the um, Catholic churches, they read out of the um, 1611 King James Bible that has the Apocrypha in it. If you ask anybody that's a Catholic that goes to a Catholic church, mm -hmm. they have them scriptures still in it. Okay, so Catholic, so a Catholic church would have the uh, original Bible in Original it. Bible with the uh, um, Apocrypha still in it. Mm -hmm. The reason why they took it, really took the Apocrypha out of it, you see how um, most of us, when we read the scriptures, we need to read the New Testament, we get confounded with Jew and Gentile, mm -hmm. and not, not knowing that uh, um, we were called Gentiles. Right. Now we have you have uh, um, Gentiles by blood, and you have the um, uh, um, Hebrew Israelites that uh, uh, um, strayed away from the Most High's law, statutes, and commandments, and were called Gentiles. Mm -hmm. Okay, and it's a lot just to capitalize on what he was saying because you said he read out, out the book of uh, Idris, right? You read out of Idris. They may not agree with that 
but you can read well, the book of Isaiah. This is the book of Isaiah, mm -hmm. uh, same, same 40 same. and 15. Mm -hmm. Behold, the nations are as a drop of a bucket and count it as a small dust of the balance. Behold, he taketh off the islands as a very little thing. Verse 17, all nations before him are as nothing and counted to him less than nothing in vanity. And that's just that's just further proving the, the book in Isaiah, say, I mean the book of Edges is saying the same thing in Isaiah when you go mm -hmm. to 40 and 15. It's saying he, he doesn't count the other nations as anything. They're, 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 they're small to him to compare to the people of Israel. All right, so but you can order it online. Mm -hmm. um, you can order, where, where, do, you, do you know the uh, website where you can you order it online? To, um, um, eBay, you can go to uh, Amazon.com. Uh, Amazon and how do you spell the acrophor? Y P H A. I almost got it right. I had E R at the end of it. Okay. And you can find it in a Christian bookstore too. I bought some from the Christian bookstore also. Okay. All right. and, and, and apocrypha is a Hebrew word which just means uh, missing or lost books. Oh, okay. Okay, and then a lot of people. Uh, they're going to tell you that the Old Testament is done away with. So we're going to prove that too as well. So it being as though that's in the Old Testament and that's in the Apocrypha, we're going to show you that that's entirely not true too, that the Old Testament is not done away so, with. And, and, and with them proving that, it's going to uh, um, answer uh, another one of your questions About pertaining the food. to the foods that we the eat. Food, yep. Okay. Now we're going to go uh, to the book of uh, Psalms, verse 40, I mean chapter 40, excuse me, and 7. And the book of Psalms, chapter 40, verse 7 says, Then said I, lo, I come in the volume of the book. Mm -hmm. It is written of me. Mm -hmm. So um, that's saying I come in the entirety of the book. Mm -hmm. But not only that, we're going to prove it in the New Testament as well. Go, read the book of Hebrews, chapter 10, verse 7. Hebrews, chapter 10, verse 7. Then said I, lo, I come in the volume of the book. Mm -hmm. It is written of me to do thy will. Oh God, you see how when you do uh, when you read precept upon precept, it lines up with um, one another, and it and it brings uh, a fullness of understanding about the scriptures. Mm -hmm. And that, that's the one. That's the one thing. Like a lot of people say that they, they deal with they, they don't deal with the Old Testament; they deal with the New Testament. But the New Testament is just basically reiterating everything that the Old Testament said. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. So you need the Old Testament to really understand what the New Testament is talking about. Yeah. For example, with the Gentiles and stuff like that, if you don't know the Old Testament, you're not going to know what the Gentiles is talking about. Okay. So that's, that's, that's one thing that's got a lot of the, a lot of the Christian churches think that. And, and, and at the same about. time, at the same time, you know, during the time of the New Testament, where were they speaking from? I mean, a lot of time they say, um, uh, as it is written, or thus saith the Lord. They're talking from the Old Testament. There was no New Testament. That's mm -hmm. where they're speaking from. Right. You know, especially yep. Paul. I mean, you got to think. Paul is not contradicting the things that they said. And to prove that he's not contradicting uh, the Old Testament, we're going to read uh, Romans chapter 3, verse 31. And, and Romans chapter 3, verse 31 reads, Do we then make void the law through faith? God forbid. Right. Ye, we establish the law. So that means we're supposed to go forth and put forth this law to our people so that they have guidelines and regulations to save their soul. And right. So right. Like, um, can somebody get me uh, 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 16? It does kind of sound weird because, like, Jesus said, I came to, uh, you know, to, to fulfill the law. So it's, oh, so Jesus came, so we don't have to follow it anymore. Exactly. That does sound weird. That, 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 that's that's always sounded problem. a little weird to me. Three and sixteen. Three and sixteen. Now, this is the reason you got uh, a lot of people get uh, uh, confused. Most most of the time, when you um, speak to uh, a Christian uh, um, pastor or anything, they always run into Paul's letters. Mm -hmm. But what's happening is they're getting confounded with uh, with Paul's letters. Read that for me. I, I'm gonna start with fifteen into sixteen. Okay. What? Where? What was that? Uh, Second oh. Peter chapter three, verse fifteen and sixteen. Okay. An account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation. Even as our beloved brother, Paul also, according to the wisdom given unto him, hath written unto you, as also in all his epistles, mm -hmm. speaking in them of these things, in which are some things hard to be understood, which they that are unlearned and unstable rest, as they do also the other scriptures unto their own destruction. So in other words, what he's saying is if a lot if you're if you're um unstable, if you're not and you're unlearned, you run to Paul's uh, uh, um, teaching and pick a scripture out 
for instance, when we um, um, read uh, uh, John 3, 16, for mm -hmm. God so loved the world that he gave, if you don't get the understanding, if you don't grab the precept and understanding what, uh, um, what the scripture is talking about, you're going to be confounded. And this is the reason, this is the turmoil that goes on between uh, Hebrew Israelites and the Christian church. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And let me, let me grab something real quick. In Psalms uh, 111 and 10, now, like it was talking about unstable and being unrest. Mm -hmm. and, and not understanding the people who don't have understanding. Now, Psalms 111 and 10 read, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the fear of the Lord is the commandments. Mm -hmm. Keeping the commandments is how you fear the Lord. Now, it says, A good understanding have, those, have they, Salah, have they that do all his commandments. His praises endureth forever. So okay. the people who are going to have the understanding of the Bible understand the Bible are the ones who are keeping the commandments. Mm -hmm. So if you're saying that the law is done away when we don't have to keep the commandments, how are you going to understand the Bible? When it's telling you, you got to keep the commandments to understand the Bible. Mm -hmm. Okay, and, and the law is done away with, all you got to do is go to um, Hebrews chapter 10, and I'm going to show you the law that's done away with. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to start at verse 1. For the law, having a shadow of good things to come, and not the very image of things, can never, with those sacrifices, what they offered year by year continually, uh, make the corners there unto perfect. Now, back in the Old Testament, if you committed a sin, you had to sacrifice a bull or a goat or a lamb mm -hmm. or a dove for your sin. So we're going to go back to verse 2. For, for then will they not have ceased to be offered, because that the worshippers once purged should I have had no more a conscience of sins. Mm -hmm. But in those sacrifices, there is remembrance again made of sins every year. For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sins. Mm -hmm. Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, he saith, Sacrifice and offerings thou wouldest not, but a body has thou prepared me in burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin thou hast had no pleasure. Then said I, Lo, I come in the volume of the book, it is written of me to do thy will, O God. Above when he said, Sacrifice and offering and burnt offerings and offering for sin, thou wouldest not neither have pleasure therein, which are offered by law. Mm -hmm. Then said he, Lo, I come to do thy will, O God. He taketh away the first, that he may establish a second, by the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Yahawashai once for all. And every priest standeth daily ministering and offering oftentimes the same sacrifices which can never take away sins. Mm -hmm. That's what Jesus came for, to for take sure. away that law, a sacrifice for sins. And that's the only one. That's yeah, the only the one. Sacrificial law, that's it. The sacrificial law. All right. So, you guys, uh, when you guys present the stuff, you're speaking straight from the Bible. So that's it's right. hard to that's argue it. it. Um, my question is, is your approach. Mm -hmm. Now, sometimes, yeah, sometimes, sometimes I feel, now this, this is me, now sometimes I feel like when I've, when I've spoken to, uh, let, me, let, me, let me get his name correct now, let me get it right, uh, Yakana, when, when I've spoken to Yakanan, sometimes I felt sometimes some of the way he came off was a little harsh. Might have been a little... Like, so if, if someone believes in something different and your job is to convince them or your job is to try to get the truth into them, like, if, if you go in a combative way, it might turn them off. It might, like, harden their heart from hearing anything you have to say, whether it be the truth or not. So I would say, is there any way maybe you could be a little bit, you know, more tactful right, in right. getting the truth into people? Or, or, or is this the way just the, is this just the way it is? Well, well, what, what's happening is we've been conditioned. Uh -huh. uh, uh, we've been conditioned through the Christian church that, you know what I mean, we come in love, love, love. And we're going to answer one of your questions. Well, a couple of your questions with this. So we think that love is this mushy feeling when you hug on the brother and stuff like that. But one thing you got to understand is that when we bring in out scripture and we're not using none of our opinion, mm -hmm. it's not, it's not, God is a, a man of war. Mm -hmm. You know, and when we, we bring out the scriptures, we give it with thus saith the Lord. Mm -hmm. A lot of people do not receive chastisement. Yep. And sometimes chastisement hurts because what's happening is when you receive truth, you have to change. And right. a lot of people right. don't want to change. So they, they, it's not that they, 
they, they, they talk about our approach and the way we bring it out because every Sunday a Christian pastor may have 20 people in a room and he has a mic hollering and screaming, walking up and down the pulpit, and they have no problem with that. Mm -hmm. But when the scriptures are coming out, can you read that in the, uh, um, uh, Isaiah, 58. Isaiah 58 and 1? Okay. The book of Isaiah, chapter 58, verse 1. Mm -hmm. Cry aloud, spare yeah. not. Lift up thy voice like a trumpet, uh -huh. and show my people their transgressions in the house of Jacob their sins. Mm -hmm. so, the, so the scriptures... Most High order us to cry aloud, mm -hmm. and He orders us not to spare nobody's feelings. Mm -hmm. That's right. I mean, because what happens is when the scriptures is coming out, we had a lot, many, many brothers that try to debate us with the scriptures, but that is not that's not learned in the scriptures. Mm -hmm. And what happens is when they are not able to to um 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 come out of scripture for scripture, mm -hmm. then that's when the emotion comes in. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's when the, the arguments. Most of the time, if you look at the, uh, uh, um, a lot of our YouTube videos and a lot of the other brothers' YouTube videos, it's always the people that really starts the argument mm -hmm. because emotion kicks in when when uh, when chastisement comes. And, and like the Aqua, so like the Aqua was saying, you know, saying like the Bible tells us to re rebuke our brothers. You know, saying because if we don't correct our brothers, how are we ever going to get right? Yep. You know what I mean? So the the problem with the Christian church is the Christian church they tell you, Oh, you can you can you can basically live in sin as long as you praise to the most high. Right. You're gonna be, you're gonna be okay. But that's not what the scriptures talk about. Man. You know what I mean? The scriptures, the scriptures don't the talk rainbow. about that. A lot of people like, a lot of people oh, deal with uh, grace and they think grace is a sense of safety, it's a safety net. Mm -hmm. But when you actually look into the scripture and you find out what grace is, grace is only giving us a chance to repent and come back to the law. Right. It's right. not giving us a chance to just do whatever we want and mm -hmm. just, oh God, God, I'm sorry. Yep. So I can't I can't go out on the weekends party, have have a commit adultery mm -hmm. and then come home and just be like most high I'm sorry. Right. So, 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 so um, get that in the, um, First John chapter five. Mm -hmm. uh, so we got, we got to understand what love is. When we talk about the love of God, yep. and say you want to give you want to give the brothers mm -hmm. the love of God, yep. we got to understand what the scriptures, how the scripture give a, a solid definition of what the love of God is. And when the scripture come out, I want you to just think for a second and say, are the Christian church giving you the love of God? Or your fellow brothers, the Hebrew Israelites, giving you the love of God. Mm. The book of First John, chapter five, verse three. Mm -hmm. Two and Four, three. First verse two, oh, two and three. Two and three. Yeah. Oh, I was pulling up First John uh, five and three, but that'll work too. Five, five, chapter, uh, yeah, first five. John five, it's locks, locks, two, five. And three, so locks. two and three. Two and three. First John five, two and three. By this we know that we love the children of God. Mm -hmm. Understand, this is how we're going to know that we love the children of God. Mm -hmm. our, fellow, our fellow Hebrew Israelites, whether they want to receive it or not. When we love God and keep his commandments. The only way we can love God is if we're keeping his commandments. Mm -hmm. If we're not keeping his commandments, we don't love God. I don't care how much we cry. The Most High even says in Psalms that if we... Uh, um, if we break his commandments, even our prayers are an abomination. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this is the reason why we go through so much things as a whole. That uh, our, us as the so-called African Americans go through so much things as a whole. Because we break, we, uh, we're breaking the most highest commandments. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Uh, For this is the love of God. That we keep his commandments and that his commandments are not grievous. Uh -huh. This is the love of God when we keep his commandments and we teach our fellow brothers to keep the commandments. This is how we show our love. Because if I'm keeping the commandments, I'm not going to wish harm on none of my brothers. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to steal from none of my brothers. I'm not going to take none of my brother's wives or anything like that. Mm -hmm. And I'm loving you through the Most High, the way the Most High says. Okay. And grab, grab that in hold on, hold on. And um, a lot of Christian pastors, like they like to run to Matthew 22. And um, they like to try to say that you only got to keep uh, two commandments, which is... Love God and love your neighbor as you love yourself. Uh, and um, uh, the book of Matthew, uh, chapter uh, 36 uh, through 30 through 40, it says, uh, Master, which is the great commandments in the law? And Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. 
This is the first and greatest commandment. Verse 39. And the second is like unto it, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thy love thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Now, on these two commandments, it hangs all the law and the prophets. And they fail to realize that part right there. All these two commandments hang uh, uh, all of the laws. So if you go to Leviticus, chapter 17 and 18, it says, Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thy heart. If, if, you, if you don't hate your brother, the opposite of hate is love. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor and not suffer sin upon them. Thou shalt not avenge nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people, but thou shalt love thy neighbor as thy love thyself. That's the precept of that. So if you love your neighbor, you're going to rebuke your neighbor. Same way, you, the same way you would slot. The same way you would rebook yourself. Like, and, and furthermore, like he, he was just talking about, a lot of a lot of people say those are the only two laws you got to keep. Mm -hmm. Those are the only two laws you got to keep, and you fulfill the law. But when you go to Second John, uh, the verse six, it says, "And this is the love that we walk after His commandments. This is the commandment that, as we have heard from the beginning, right. you shall walk in it." Mm -hmm. So let's talk about the commandments from the beginning. Yeah, of the Bible. All, yes, right. So they, they use. You gotta give the love of God, but they don't give you a proper definition of mm -hmm. what the love of God is. They give their own personal interpretation of what they feel the mm -hmm. love of God is. Now, for instance, you can have you can have a woman that is being beaten on beat on by her man mm -hmm. constantly, constantly beating on him, and that man tells you that I love you. Mm -hmm. and that, so that lets you know that love is not an emotion; mm -hmm. it's an action. It's an action, mm -hmm. right? Right. That's perfect. That's a perfect example. Um, we want we want to bring out another scripture right here. This is Isaiah chapter thirty and ten. Oh yeah, bring that up. Which say to the seers, see not, and to the prophets, prophesy not unto us right things. Mm -hmm. Speak unto us smooth things. Right. Prophesy deceits. And the reason we bring that out is because the Christian church they hear they, it's smooth things, things that 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 feel good to them. Mm -hmm. You know, not keeping the law, being able to do what you want to do as long as you got grace to fall back on. Mm -hmm. That that that's the smooth thing that they hear in the, in the Christian church nowadays. Putting the rainbow flag on the church just so you have members. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. See, this is the reason why there, 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 there are so many homosexuals on the pool. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So many people that goes in the church every day. The church is supposed to be a hospital for those that that are uh, um, are bound with sin. Mm -hmm. And this is the reason why. Day by week by week, they go in the church of center. They come out the church of center. There's no transformation. Mm -hmm. The only thing is now I'm giving, I'm showing you fake love, but I, I go home and talk about you. Okay. Mm -hmm. This this is true love. I can call even any one of these brothers at any time and tell them I need or I need them to I need uh, their assistance, and they're right there. That's mm -hmm. true love. Mm -hmm. All right. So uh, the approach. That you guys, the approach you guys do sometimes, even even uh, so, Yakanan, there's you don't you think your approach on online has always been. Uh, my brother's gonna bring out another scripture. Okay, <laughs> this is John ten, fourteen to, to sixteen, and it reads, "I am the good shepherd, a uh, good shepherd, and know my sheep, and I I'm known of mine, as the Father know of me." And so know I the Father, I lay down my life for my sheep. And the other sheep I have, which are not of this fold, them I also shall bring. Mm -hmm. And they shall hear my voice, and they shall be one fold and one shepherd. Mm -hmm. So if we cry aloud and spare not, the Most High Sheep going to hear his voice. And who meant to hear this, they're going to hear and obey. And whoever is not going to obey, they're going to continue with their life and be back in the world and live it lavishly. Mm -hmm. So the Most High said, my sheep going to hear my voice. Right. Right. So the delivery might be whack to some, but we're not supposed to care how you feel about it. Because mm -hmm. it already instructed us to cry loud, spare not, rebuke thy neighbor, and not suffer sin upon them. And that his sheep is going to hear his voice, and they're going to live. It's like, it's like, it's like, and he mentioned about chastising, so like, brother. Um, but this is uh, Hebrews 12 and 6. For whom the Lord loveth, he chastises, and uh, scorn every son whom he receiveth. So basically... If the Lord chastises you, he's calling you his son. You know, you're part of that fold, basically. Mm -hmm. 
he wants you in. Everybody may, you know, black Hispanic may be an Israelite, but everyone's not called to come in. Right, right. right. Yep. Beautiful. All right. Well, uh, I well, think yeah. this here too. Okay. This is John chapter 15, verse 16. This is uh, the Messiah's words. Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain that whatsoever you shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it to you. So um, we have to be chosen by uh, the Most High. We can't have to choose the Most High. Okay. Chosen by the Most High. Not, wow, okay. All right. Well, uh, that's all I have for my questions. This has been the quickest hour. I think we've went uh, on this show yet. Um, is there anything else you guys would like to say? We have to get ready to head out to the... Uh, Do you got callers? Anybody got any questions? Uh, no, we have no callers. We are on Facebook Live on your page, and uh, so we, the comments would have to come from there. Okay. And I, 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 what I think, I think people are just listening and learning. I don't think... Uh, you know, the question, I mean, I, I, I do have one question, and this isn't necessarily to the, uh, the, the Israelites, but this is just a, a biblical question on slavery. Mm -hmm. Because that's one thing that I've been studying a lot lately, too, and how the Bible actually teaches how to, to keep a slave, how to punish a slave, and everything. And it sounds a little bit like how slavery was here. Is there any difference, or, or what is the biblical context of the slavery? I understand that the, when, when the Most High says, when the um, Most High put in the scriptures, when he's talking about uh, 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 your master mm -hmm. beat you with many stripes, it's talking about uh, Yahweh Shai. It's not talking about a, 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 a man. Mm -hmm. Because, and, and otherwise, we have to understand that all of this stuff that we're going through and the stuff that, that, that we're going to go through from, from the time that we step off the, mm -hmm. uh, uh, the ships and to the time that Yahweh Shai comes back is nothing but prophecy. Right. It was said. It was written. Mm -hmm. So my question is, uh, uh, that that's just something that I just, that came off the top of my head because that's what I've been studying a lot lately. And, uh, you know, because it says, you know, if a man, you own him for seven years, if they escape and deal with them harshly. And, I, you know, I was doing just a lot of uh, reading on that recently. So that's why I just had that question. But uh, another uh, question that I have, and this one is, uh, probably my this is my serious question that I have for you guys. Uh, where where can I get one of them T-shirts? <laughs> uh, I like the T-shirt, so where can a brother get one of them from? Oh, well, we have custom made. Yeah, we, we, got one, we got one made if you do really need one. You know, yeah, brother, this brother right here, man, he puts in the work, man. He he finds other people to get his, like the uh, shirts. The, the man, the I don't want to take no credit. The Most High, you know, he put us all together. Um, mm -hmm. we doing we here to do the work of the Most High, you know, and I'm glad that they're here. Um. I've been corresponding with this brother on Facebook, you know what I mean? And then we just happened to link. I was like, yo, man, I'm bringing you here, man. Like, we just been going back and forth. And then I, he, I've been learning stuff from him, man. He 18 years old. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And then, uh, man, I've been going out northeast. I've known him since I was a child. We've been, like, um, I found out he was studying it um, when I went back home. And I was like, yeah. And he actually uh, enlightened me to some of the things that um, I was doing wrong, you know, because like I said, the church that I was going to, they taught me was the Hebrew Israelites, mm -hmm. but they didn't teach the context of it. I thought the law was done away and everything too. And then he actually showed me that some places in the Bible, the Gentiles were us. They were talking about us. So mm -hmm. when it say Jew and Gentile, it was talking about um, the Northern Kingdom and the Southern Kingdom. Mm -hmm. The Northern Kingdom being the Hispanics and the, and the Southern Kingdom being Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, you know, it, it, it just became like, Real to me, I was like, oh, man, I got to stop doing this, man. I mean, shrimp, I'm partying, you know. Mm -hmm. I got I to leave this alone, you know. Yeah. And then um, me and this brother, man, we just been studying at work, man. And um, last Juneteenth, I met this brother. And okay. I was doing it. You saw me. I was doing yeah. the teaching by myself. And man, then he I... came up and he was doing the teaching. And then we just started teaching together. I was like, wow. Listen, you said something about the Bible, and I said something about the Bible. And then they said, oh, they about to talk. Y'all want to talk about it? And I was like, I don't know if this is the place. And then you just took the Bible and threw it on the table and said, let's pull it out. Like, <laughs> <laughs> right. yeah. He really about that life. Right. 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 Okay. Yeah, okay. We, we got to gotta be about the Father's business, man. Yeah, all we got to be strong in the yeah. Lord and the power of his might, you know? Yeah. So you guys met at the last Juneteenth too, and you guys yes. have been uh, brothers ever since. Oh we man, we man, me and him, we've been pushing the work faithfully. Like in some weekends we can't get up, and that make me sad when we can't. But yeah, 
we we been fellowshipping ever since, and then um like I said, me and him been fellowshipping at my job, mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden he hit me up the blue. It was like, yo man, we gave fellowship, and then bam, it just came together. Me, him, and another brother. Uh, shout out to Hosai Kanai, you know, um and we've been fellowshipping all together, you know, and um shout out to uh, Judah uh, Showtime Stone. We all been sh show we all been uh studying together. You know, and that's how it came together. And then I talked to Uriel. He was like, yo, what y'all doing with y'all thing up there? We can put this thing together, you know what I mean? And um, he was like, yo, I'm going to come up there soon. I was like, yeah, we're going to do the Juneteenth. And then I talked to you. And he was like, yeah, I'll have you on the radio show. And it just all came together. It just happened to happen the same day. It's a blessing to have you guys here. So get ready to head out to the Juneteenth celebration right now and get ready to uh, uh, give that word to some people who need to hear. All so praise to the most high. All praise. All, praise. All, all right. Is that it? Yeah, that's yeah. it. We all thank right. you guys for coming on. And uh, is there any last, I'll give you guys the last word. Do you have anything else you want to say? I mean, the only thing we can say, if anybody needs edification, um, you can find us on our, our Facebook page. Uh, YouTube. Yeah, yeah. You, Rise of the Chosen. Yeah, Rise, Rise of the Chosen. Uh, Truth Behind the Surface Temple. Mm -hmm. You can find us on Facebook, our YouTube channel. What's that YouTube channel? It's uh, called Mikael. Mikael. Um, you know I mean, if you need edification or if you want to do a part two and you can bring out more information because there's a whole lot more curses that we can bring out to show who the African-American, uh, Native American, and so-called Latinos who are through the scriptures. And we will definitely do that in the upcoming weeks. We'll definitely right. have you guys back. Mm -hmm. so. there's, there's a lot more scriptures between that. If you want to still deal with the law, we can pull out more scriptures of that proving the law. Yep. Um, we can prove more of that with the Gentiles yeah, without a shadow of a doubt. The Gentiles mm -hmm. and... The love according to the Bible. So if anybody needs more edification, you can find uh, those are the, those are the places you can find us. We have no problem edifying the brothers. We trying to wake our people up in these last days. All right. That's why everybody edifying. Edify. All right. Thanks for coming by. All right, no everybody. All right. All right. All praise to the Most High. All praise All right. to the Most High. That means arise Israel. <laughs> arise Israel. Arise Israel. Israel. All right, y'all. <laughs> <laughs>